they might have a 300 horsepower engine and they're still faster than your 500 horsepower engine. It's not, it's not the engine builder. So we're looking at these heads here. Uh, first thing I notice is that these look like 7 16 rocker studs. Is that correct? It is correct. Uh, from AFR, if you don't spec it out, they'll come default 3 8 and, and that's what's on stock LT1s, correct? Yep. Now, when would you when did you think that 7 16 is worth going to? Because oh, that means you got to use different rocker arms. Yeah. It's hard to say. I think 3 8 will work fine for most hot rodding. Uh, it's just hard to say. If... If you want to save money, stay with your 3.8s and get 3.8s. Even stock rockers. Stock rockers are the quiet. They'll, they're the most quiet. And, you know, if you hate hearing, you know, like ice cube trays shaking, stay with the stock. And there's nothing wrong with them for a mild build. But if you want, you know, if you really have a high lift and you've got high horsepower, high lift, 7 16 get everything stiffer. Everything you can. Uh, these adjustable guides are stock with, I mean, they come with an AFR. They help you to kind of center the tip of your, your rocker. Um, AFR offers 716 studs as a very cost-effective upgrade. They click that button when you're ordering them. I think you think it's, it's worth the money? Yeah, I think it's 90 bucks or something like that extra, right? So you're not spending more like so you're going to spend 90 bucks for a, a set of arps or around there so just get them from afr because then you know they're the right you don't have to say oh what size do i need if you get too long about the the bottom end here that bolts in you're going to bottom out you might crack these things and yeah, these are the ones that go down um which ones are the ones that go into the intake manifold the, is that the valve cover bolts no the intake one go, goes into the intake. On AFRs, they don't, right? On, oh, on, uh, but on stock, factory ones, they do. Yeah. So it's the intake will be a hole there, so you have to seal it. So if you have GM aluminum LT1 heads, do you need to put thread sealant on yes. there? You have to. And okay. You, not on the exhaust, but on intake. On the intake. So you would put the rocker arm on and then loosen these with a wrench and adjust the guide plates so that where the, the geometry of where that rocker is ro is riding on the the yeah, valve, the, the, this the this alignment. This alignment, yeah. yeah. And then this you tighten that down. Do you know what the torque spec is on that, or just good and tight? They have a spec, and it's on a spec sheet, and it's 45 or 50 foot-pounds. Okay. That okay. one I can't, I don't have memorized. Do you put Loctite on those, or do no. they not they not back out? No, no Loctite. Um, I just put a dab of, of this grease, and because you don't want to put too much, because you might get a like a, a sort of like a hydraulic. hydraulic. Yep. You yeah. can't get the air out from underneath of it. Right. Yep. And I, way back, I cracked something um, hydraulicing something. Like, the corner edge. Thankfully, it wasn't a head or anything. I learned my lesson on that, and I was putting a a bolt on my own car. The oil pan bolt or something i popped the the corner of the engine Ooh. I, I heard something went boing flying away it's like how did i do that and you think it was because too much uh, material There's, on the threads there, there no there was like some oil or dirt in there and i was bolting it down and and it popped the corner off yeah so it was one of the no harm no fouls but a good lesson and once you hear you'll hear like some gas kind of coming out it's like be careful pull that thing out and see if there's too much oil or mm -hmm. something in there. You, um, any the other? These are off the dyno. The witness marks from the tips. So most of the time, you'll you'll have the the entire valve will have all the way around it will have that witness mark. This didn't have time to rotate. It looks kind of funny, like it went one way and it went back the other way. That one didn't rotate. That one started to rotate, you know, kind of this way, this way, because the the valves bounce around and they kind of turn around when they're running. And how many minutes was this engine running on the dyno? Was this running for twenty minutes, an hour? How much Probably actual run time? Warm up, you know, warm up and make sure it gets up to temperature twenty minutes. It 
gets very little runtime. So let me ask let me ask you a question on that because there's a lot of guys that don't have access to an engine dyno, and uh, like I'm putting together a motor right now, and it is what it is. I'm not changing anything. It's supposedly this motor only had ten thousand miles, but say you are you built it yourself. You had the machine shop fit the bores to the the pistons. Uh -huh. You put everything together yourself. You got it together. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to crank it and start to make sure the ignition system is working and and it's not leaking, right? Yeah. And what, what I'm hearing from you because I, I thought I was concerned. As soon as you start it up, you want to get those rings seated as fast as possible, but a 20-minute warm-up is not going to be a problem? Um, I wouldn't worry so much about hurrying up and getting the ring seated. You don't, you don't do that 20-minute. That's a, a flat tavic cam kind of thing. You There's one thing you worry about, and that's having a good tune and no leaks. It cannot be rich, and you don't want to idle too much because you're worrying about the rings on the initial startup. So if it is too rich... Uh, and you don't catch that, that is going to hurt. The, make it real hard to, to seat, and it might even ruin it. And is that because you got liquid fuel coming in because it's cold and it gets into the top ringland area and it just the unburned fuel sits there, dilutes the oil, and goes down into the crankcase, and now you've got thin oil? Yep. Well, you've got that. actually just washes these, the oil. So it washes the cylinders, and, and the oil needs to be on the cylinders, actually. A rich engine can ruin a ring seal, brand new, you know, a couple miles on it, a thousand miles on it, a hundred thousand miles on it. The rich does not help at all. And, and when you're talking about rich, are we talking like black smoke out the tailpipes? Or are we talking a wide band screwed in upstream of the cat to monitor what we're seeing? Yeah, How would someone it, measure that? Yeah, that's a good <clears throat> point. Because it, it could be 12 to 1, 11 to 1. 10 to 1. It can't, you just can't be misfiring rich. And don't worry about the ring seal because the rings will seal themselves right away, like 10 miles. Uh, two things, you know, make sure it's not too rich and don't idle. Don't just drive around and then just idle. Idle, idle. I love that idle. You know, listen to that idle driving through the, when it's brand new, don't be idling it so much unless you, it is perfectly tuned.